Hello and welcome to the International Schools Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Taylor, and on the podcast, we discuss all aspects of technology and life in international schools, with new episodes live every two weeks. We focus on people who are currently working in schools, and we talk about life in their current country and dive into some specific topics. The podcast is brought to you by Acer for Education. People always ask what Chromebooks we recommend and what Windows laptops we recommend. And after trying literally all of them, we always recommend Acer. If you'd like to get more info and try out some devices, please just go to gg.gg forward slash Acer Education. That's gg.gg forward slash Acer Education. And we'll get right back to you. Also, the podcast is brought to you by Apps Events. We're a Google partner. We work all around the world. We've just got one piece of new information right now. This is in in January 2021. We're a G Suite Enterprise for Education partner. That's Giuseppe. This is a bunch of premium tools available to people using Google at their schools. We can help you get set up with a free one-month trial. So please check out the link in the show notes, and we'll do that right away. And now, on to the interview. Okay, an amazing session from Ivy Lee just then. Very warm welcome for our next speaker. Ken Morrison. I'm just going to bring him into the stream. Evening, Ken. Hello. Hello. Hi, James. Hi, everyone. Where are you now, Ken? Where are you based now? I'm in Malaysia in Johor Bahru, right across the river from Singapore. Fantastic. And which school are you at now, Ken? I'm at Raffles American School. Brilliant. So this I just, I mean, you just moved there this year or last year? Um, this is my third year. This will begin oh, the wow. third year next week. Yes. Brilliant, because we met, of course, in Korea at Chadwick at the mm-hmm. summit there. Great to have you here speaking today. Absolutely. I know you're going to be talking about student agency. Quick intro to your session. Absolutely, yes. I'll be talking about some big picture kind of rough structures, more goals and tips on how to create uh, the idea of an online environment for students during rough times like now, as well as things that will go well when we get closer to normal someday. Brilliant. So I'm just sharing... Ken's Twitter uh, ID at the bottom of the screen right now. Ken, if you want to bring your screen in, I will bring it up. I'll bring it up. And so as Ken is getting prepared, just a quick reminder, after Ken, we have Kristen, who I'll introduce in a a few moments, and Melanie. And then we will welcome Tim, Tim Evans to close out the session. Excellent. Okay, I'm bringing your screen in, Ken. Okay. Okay, here we go. Great, and I can present now. Great, all right, go ahead, Ken. Great. Very much looking forward to this. All right. Thank you, James. Hi there, yes, my name's Ken Morrison. I'm technology integrationist and teacher at Raffles American School. So today we'll go kind of fast. I would love to, to continue to connect on Twitter. This might help, um, Ed is my Twitter handle and I'd be glad to continue to connect as we move on. Big concept. How do our classrooms change now that some students have proven very much that they can be trusted to work independently? Some students have really shined and others have really, really tried when they quite honestly had a lot of freedom at home. How can we reward them by helping them come to the next step? That's my critical thinking as we, question as we begin. We encourage students to journal. Some do, some don't. I encourage my students to take one step forward and to during the pandemic, we made podcasts. Most only needed to be three minutes, but they usually ended up being five minutes or longer where they would reach out and communicate with someone in their house, uh, someone they missed, a family member, an old friend from somewhere else in the world. And um, they would get edited their, their interview down to a soundbite. And then they would create a connection between those two um, interviewees to create some type of um, bridge, which was very, very good skill for the students. Um, we're talking high school mostly, but these can be scaled down as well. This was a high stakes project. The students not only made their opinions global on YouTube, but this is a project that I got the most feedback after 10 years of working with students in Asia is these students, after seeing their teachers work hard, have great days, have days where they struggled, as well as the students, they created a seven, I think, seven minute video giving very authentic feedback for their teachers, thanking them for a great um, attempt and uh, some many good classes, but also giving feedback in case we needed to do um, online learning again. So that's on YouTube. I'd be glad to share that later if anybody asks. And 
Um, that was, I got so much great feedback and just sincere thanks and continued conversations from my peers um, after they saw that video from the students' points of view. I had another group of students. There's only three students in this small class and they were all new to school, which is why we created this class actually. And they didn't fit into the other classes yet. But they, they saw that many of their friends liked their teachers, but weren't very good with small talk, didn't, weren't, didn't know how to start and endure conversations. So we learned how to use the Glide program, which ties in very well with Google Sheets. And we made an app. They did app development where they reached out and contacted almost every school teacher in our school. They found out hobbies, advice for young people, things that these teachers like to talk about. And we made a pseudo app. Um, you, with the help of Glide. And I believe it's very similar to Awesome Tables, which I have not used. And it just works really good. It looks like a real app and it's just a great experience for the students. Many of my friends or teachers said they learned things about their other teachers that they didn't know that they will continue um, that progress or just to learn more about their peers. All of my grade 10 students have passion projects at some throughout the whole school year. And our most successful one, one student created a week-long random act of kindness. This was school-wide. She got student council to also join her. She had to have a one-on-one -on -one proposal meeting with our principal to get it on the calendar and to get support. Another grade 10 student worked with the um, grade one students um, to help them understand all about how and why plants grow and why it's healthy. Two years in a row, my grade 10 students worked with their um, athletes, sorry, their coaches, health teachers, and other, and the athletes to um, work with diet, a diet to be the most efficient athletes they can be. And they documented all this in Google Sites. And some students don't know passion yet, which is absolutely fine, um, but they're willing to work hard. So what I do is I use Google Sites for them to go through Google Applied Digital Skills. They're willing to work hard, but they just don't have a passion yet. So they can learn from the engineers of Google. And basically, they have to document what they're learning and create a simplified version to help others have some idea of how to do the steps of what they learn during the hour, two hour, three hour course uh, mini session. If you're like me, you might not know who Elizabeth Choi is. What a phenomenal life this woman has lived um, between Malaysia and Singapore. One of my students was a little bit frustrated that uh, Wikipedia has very little information on Elizabeth Choi. So she did a great research project. It only needed to be about a five minute video, the cultural hero project. It ended up being about 15 minutes and they used Google Slides as an interactive kind of digitally enhanced conversation starter. And they used it a little bit like Pear Deck. I have them kind of create a tip so they can sit down with a tablet or a computer next to a friend, tell these stories in a way that um, students, that teenagers might enjoy learning more. And it's really fun on that. I can share a video later as well. I strongly believe that we should simplify big tasks down to simple, so silly that we feel silly to not, if we're not willing to take the next step. So in my slides, I also often tell students, your very next step is to do A, B, and C. We have a few goals today. Um, one goal that I would say is to create a culture of 360 degree feedback for, between students. One simple way to do that is two stars and a wish. In Google Slides, make a slide that every make a slide for every student, and every student after the presentation or I, any project is shared, they have to share two things that the the peer loved. One thing they would encourage to make it better. When I was younger, I wrote for the my school newspaper. I remember my feedback from my peers so much. Another tip that I would suggest: try to create a classroom culture of very small state storytelling. Really quickly, it's all about the prompt, giving them tools and time to share their ideas. It does not have to be book created, but find some way for the students in, with voice, video, photos to share their ideas. Here's a prompt. Every student, every teacher in a school has some ideas. You just became school principal. What changes can I expect starting next Friday? Give the students some time to create, give them some small steps and have fun with their ideas. Uh, goal number three, create a classroom culture of Dort student videos where they advocate for their resources, times, um, deadline extensions, etc. Open it up and give students that voice and that opportunity to advocate for themselves. A perfect example, have them advocate for who their teammates should be. 
And it can't just be, hey, we're good friends, or hey, we've had gotten an A in the past. Have them tell you very clearly why um, their skills work well with other teammates and what skills they are looking for that they want to learn from their peers. So a simple, silly next step is to have students make a short video to advocate for themselves for their next team project. Tip four, create a classroom culture of students knowing the learning standard and the learning task as an entrance ticket. My students, most of my class know this before they sit down, they should be able to, get, they have to read the classroom learning standard for the day and the learning task and they should be able to repeat it. For about the last year, um, I, after reading um, a book that Bill Gates suggested to many teachers, um, one teacher in this book suggests that, or she, she talks about how in some schools, in one school, all the students have to get a small data related for any lab time. I started doing that at a smaller scale and it's working really, really well. Students don't get excited for things that the teachers aren't excited for. Um, as you see behind this character, man, is the learning objectives, et cetera. But I don't simply um, go to Google Classroom and drop a link and say, here's our next Google Meet, meet me at 10 o'clock. I try to create a two or three sentence sales pitch and I let students know, if you give me your best effort for 55 minutes, these are the two skills you're gonna learn and how it applies to the, our bigger goals as a class. So I highly encourage you to start communicating through Google Classroom as to help students get excited for the next learning task. A goal number five um, is to create a classroom culture of short student videos and so that you can, where they are documenting their progress. Of course, our students have to get to the learning objectives, their learning goals. It is a responsibility to get them there. But on some weeks, I let my students know that as long as they can communicate that they know the goal, and they can document the process of what they're trying to do to get there, um, that they can still get a good grade for that weekly task. If they can document their task, tell me what's working well, um, what they tried that did not work well, what they learned from overcoming and what that aha moment was. Um, and it can be anywhere from 90, 90 seconds to three minutes to, to longer for higher st students. Um, we have our online learning platform. This one is Code HS. And they, they tell me the dashboard, but then they go deeper in and they'll decipher the code a little bit and tell me what was hard for them and how, how they overcame their challenge. And sometimes they tell me that they learned from a quiet student that you don't even know that they're collaborating with. And it's just really good um, for the students to be able to document what's going well and what they need help with next. So I don't know, maybe five times in a term, um, students can do great on the weekly task, even if they don't meet the task, if they can document um, their progress. Step six, this is a big one. Think of Google Slides not as a presentation tool, but as an online um, interactive digital workbook. Not a worksheet, but a workbook. A simple, silly next step for you might be take slides that are working well as lecture style, inject at some kind of shifting points, inject some reflection slides. Put it in Google Classroom, share the slides, have every student um, make a copy, have it force a copy, and have students tell you in a few sentences what they learned before they move on. It can get more complex. In yesterday's PD for our school, um, some of our demographics had to use um, a different, to reach some of our students in, uh, in China, we are going to use um, an, an additional platform on top of the ones that we already used. Um, Time is tight. And so I broke it down into nine um, mini um, learning objectives. And what every one of these black boxes is a short mini objective. If some teachers or students just simply want to read the steps, that's right here. If they're more visual and they want to see the steps as screenshots, that's great. If they want to hear me explain it, that is absolutely an option as well. I'll make a short video and then I, I encourage you with that big green ugly box, that is where they can restate in their own words um, what they learned. I encourage you with your first steps of creating interactive digital learning spaces with slides, etc. Help students know what is a bare minimum that they must know to get to the next step. What are some things that are nice to know? These can be interactive buttons that take to alternative slides. Help them clarify what their goal is before they go into the steps where they're working on their progress towards the learning objective and documenting their progress. I'd be happy to share any tips um, 
after the session on how how that can work for you. I'd done this for about two years. I stopped making um, lectures, but I wasn't quite ready for videos, flip the videos at first. I started making these interactive digital um, structured digital workspaces within Google Slides and others. And what I learned was some great students thought they were doing great. They were working hard, putting in time, but they would miss some steps. So what I started doing is this ugly green that always symbolizes that some action is needed somewhere on that screen. Sometimes I just want them to do some thinking before they move on to the next step. And sometimes I can help them save time or catch something very precise with this big orange notice. And again, some information might just be nice to know, but these are some structures within Google Slides. This allows them to learn at their own pace, to go backwards if they miss something. And I can learn from the reflection questions, their video, if I have them add audio, links, et cetera. So basically all of these things are steps that I can go just a bit beyond the voice and the choice. And the big goal is how might we create some rails to empower students to always make progress and to track their progress. Rubrics are a great start, but these are some extra steps. So big question, how would your school be different if every teacher in your school knew every one of your students' passion projects and goals? Um, passion projects, I highly encourage you to find some way to integrate and to make public what the students' goals are, because then other teachers and other subjects start looking for connections between their learning objectives and what that student's goals are. So that is what I would like to share with you. I would love to continue communicating on, on Twitter, et cetera, and to help you if you're interested in learning more, or if you've gone to the next step and you wanna give me some guidance, I would love that. Ken, thank you very much. That was awesome. There's a huge amount of tips and info and stuff to take away there. I've put your Twitter handle at the bottom. Maybe we can share your slides a little bit later as well. I'll put the link into the YouTube feed that we've just been running. Okay. I just wanted to pick up your, your final point there about passion projects. Make sure where can yeah. schools change, learn about the passion projects. I'm curious to know how do you do that? How does your school do that? Do you have any ideas about sharing that with the school community? Sure. For grade 10, we do it all within Google Sites, and some of it is online, and some of it, like the week of Kindness Week, it starts online with digital tools, and we have many teachers ready to support the students at any point. At the end of the year, my students, they do need to make their website um, public for about three weeks, and then after that, they can make a choice. But they're documenting their progress throughout the whole year. Brilliant. And they, are they all shared with all staff, all faculty in the school? Yes, all staff. Um, Depending on your time, I'll give you a quick version. At around October during a regular school year, every student has to make their elevator pitch of why they want to propose time to have to work on their passion project. That one slide within Google Slide, we publish that as a website. So it's very simple. I share that with the whole staff. And as you know, you can create that as a link that just continues to go. And um, last year we put that in the cafeteria so everyone can see a student photo and what their goal for the year was for a passion project. And it can be on a continuous link. Thank you, Ken. I'm just showing uh, Tim Evans' uh, comment. Obviously, you're passionate about this, Ken, which uh, students for sure will feed off. Great job. Absolutely. And actually, Ken, I'd love to bring you back. Just talk about that in a little bit more depth about these passion projects. I would the, enjoy that. Ken, thank you, thank you very right. much. Ken. It's been you, a James. pleasure hosting you, Ken. Thank you so Always. much. I'll see you again. Thanks, everyone. See you again, Ken. Bye.